German naval officer's dress dagger. And it belonged to the SS. You can tell the SS by the you get the lightning things on here. And you can see the anchor. See the anchor on here. And that's the old German eagle and the swastika. And uh, I picked this up. It was quite a, a story, really, because it uh, I was on a, a tug, a salvage tug, which was clearing the docks round at... Uh, we, we took Cherbourg we, after we landed at Iron Manches. It was a, about three weeks after we got cleared Cherbourg. And then we had to clear a place at Liard because the Germans sank a lot of boats there. Right. And I was on a salvage tug, deep sea salvage tug. And our job was to clear the port so that they could use them because it was about three days working at Cherbourg before we could even get any boats in. So they knew the same. So as soon as they took over Liard, we went up with them. And this merchant seaman captain of ours, we'd got this boat and the engineers was helping us then. The, the, uh, and they'd blown this boat up into two parts and we had to tow this section round from the edge, round the head. And when we got round the head, the captain, as we was pulling it to put it out of the way, he says, look at and he says, there's a German flag up on that building there. He says, uh, we'll get the jolly boat out and we'll go and go and pick it up. I said, oh, don't, this is stupid. He says, well, there's nobody about, he said, because they can't, they'd blown the bridges up it down the river, and the nearest was about 100 miles down where they could get across to this headland. And the Germans by then was scampering. They, was, they were starting to run away. So he says, well, go out, we'll go out, because it was getting quite dark. It was, uh, and this must have been uh, the beginning of July before we got Sherberg. It had been all June, yeah. It had been all June, I reckon it was about the middle of uh, the, the beginning of July. So it was still light nights, but by the time we'd got this all pulled out from the river, it would probably be about eight o'clock or half past eight at night that we got round. So he says, put your uniform on, because I was always, he says, then if anybody comes, you're in uniform. Mm. Because I never had naval uniform on when I was uh, working with these merchant ships. But this particular, so I went down, I put my uniform on, we got the jolly boat out, and off we go. So we landed up on the beach now. We're going to, it's a big hotel. And as we're going through, he's going in these different rooms. And I'm telling him, don't touch anything, don't touch anything. Because we was always taught, if you, they always booby-trap them. They say, yeah. So don't touch nothing, because these will all be booby-trapped. But um, Captain Orley was called, Sid, Sid Orley. And he says, oh, to hell with that, come on, he said. And he was picking all these things up, and he was picking beautiful things up. There was uniforms there, because it looked like these Germans taking the uniforms off and put civvies on so that they could mingle with the crowd and yeah, probably right. get away, you see. Yeah, yeah. So there was uniforms there and all these dresses, and this had some beautiful tassels around it, and it come down in a big silver bob at the end. And I had these, but he picked up German guns, swords, daggers. We had such a stack of things. And uh, all these Lug all in, all in uh, uh, holsters and everything. Yeah. It was really a beautiful lot. And this is the only one I kept because me being in the Navy, I was more restricted than he did. Mm. But I was expecting him blowing up any minute, but he was going along and picking all these things up. And he put them in a big sack. We found a sack with all flags. And he emptied all the flags out. There was all international call flags because it was a naval headquarters. Right. And they used to put signals up where, uh, for probably shipping mm. on this hotel, which was... Uh, as I said, we'll probably try and get a close-up of that and show you where yeah. it is afterwards. But, uh, so he emptied all these flags out on the floor and he put all these guns in the back, put them back in the jolly boat and we, we went back a, a, aboard the ship and uh, then went round the next day and then he sorted them all out and he gave me quite a lot of them and I had a big box full. I reckon I had probably at least 20 bayonets yeah. and swords, daggers, guns, but I, I, the, most of the guns I threw over the side because I was afraid of getting caught yeah but I'd managed to save this and I had a, another box for which I sent home I got uh, ashore in Southampton one time and sent them home to to my home address and when, when I went home when I opened them my mother was so shocked with all the things I, I yeah. had there <laughs> but uh, but that one I'm, I'm pleased that you can look after it and this money yeah was what was issued with when we, it's it says it's uh, Frank's but we had a pile of this money in case we ever got captured or anything, we could probably pay our way out through mm. the French yeah. to get back to England. 
And then after the, uh, after the worst of it was over, they took all the money back off us. But uh, I managed to hang on to that, and you can willingly have that as well. I hope that uh, you'll yeah. put it with your souvenir. Do you want to get any, mate? Uh, it's sort up this dress dagger. This, at Liavia, this is a, going down to the River Seine. It comes into the mouth of the River Seine, and they'd blocked the area about here so that we couldn't get down because it was really then that there was running short of fuel. And we had to clear this seaway so that the small tankers could get through to supply the, the British Army and uh, with the uh, fuel, because that's why they was running out of fuel for the tanks and stuff. So these ships, what he'd sunk across here, they had the engineers helping, and they would blew them more or less in half so that we could tow them out and, uh, and tow them. And we towed it round to this headland here. That's Liave itself. And we just towed them because this was where the dock was. And um, across here, some of the bridges had all been broken down. And so what they did, we towed it round here, and it was when we got to this headland here where they had this big hotel on the front. And this is where we, we dropped the part of the boat, what we had to uh, beach in as far to the land as possible, that he noticed this German flag up on this building. And as I said, the Germans had all left, and a lot of them had put civvies on, and they was escaping this way because the British army was coming across this way. They was making for Paris, but they wanted to catch the river to get supplies up to Rouen. And so, as they was coming across here, they disappeared this way, the Germans, because we never landed here. That's what the Germans thought we would land up here, opposite to uh, uh, Calais. But instead of that, they landed here at Aramanches, which you can see on this theory, and never thinking, and so they didn't have a lot of stuff here. And what we had to do we had to build an artificial arbour, and these was boats which would, had been hauled, and we towed them across with these salvage tugs. This is one of our salvage tugs there, and we're towing that to crane in there to clear other stuff on, off the beaches. And we sunk these in position, and then put these concrete posts, or concrete like big, uh, like a big house they were, with a gun emplacement on the top, and we sank those along here to save the waves and all the boats being wrecked and you could see on the outside it was quite rough and on the inside it was smooth and uh, and that's what we did and put all these barges along and then they could tie them alongside them and get a get the uh, the men ashore so he was a bit of a hard nut he was a merchant seaman but that's where it actually came from just on that peninsula there and so you'll always have that as a souvenir and i hope you'll look after it paul thanks very much Ernie. looking through this book though it says here, you have need to focus on this, but it says here there's a Soviet, a Soviet soldier uh, put on an impromptu cabaret, and it says, if you notice, the Soviet dancer has a Nazi dagger tucked into his boot, which is here, and it's one identical to yours, which they, they souvenired when they could get these things, because after the war, all these had to be destroyed as the war was coming to an end because they didn't want them to... Uh, Thing, and they all had to be melted down, so it was a good idea that one or two were saved, and today they're becoming quite valuable. Okay. Yeah. And during the war, I wasn't allowed to be captured in uniform, so whenever I went ashore in any, same as when we was in Argentina here, being on a merchant ship, we was carrying beef back to England, and I had to try and hide um, and be as a deckhand, and I was always put down as a deckhand, I was never put down as a Royal Naval rating, though there was gunners on board these merchant ships. That's when we landed in New York one time, and before they'd come into the war, I still had to be a neutral country deckhand, and that was on a, another merchant ship. But, because uh, if we were captured, I had to throw my uh, tag away, which said I was a Royal Navy, and I had to go as a merchant seaman, and these were the things I had to then get captured as a merchant seaman rather than a Royal Naval rating because they didn't like the Royal Naval blokes shooting at them so they used to shoot at us. When we was in convoy in a, a U-boat that was a escort vessel called um, HMS Defender and that one got a direct torpedo and we saw the torpedo pass our boat and it got a hit dead amidships on this escort vessel 
we went alongside her after as we added towards it you can even see that there's survivors up on the the deckhead and we went alongside and they launched a lot of boats because it took about 10 minutes to go down this one usually they go down much quicker and uh, we pick survivors up on this this is as she's going down and we pick survivors up and uh, and put them aboard our ship and, uh, and we took them to the nearest port in fact we put them on a naval we transferred a lot of them on a naval craft before we got into port because there's quite a few of them what got injured <laughs>